I choose neither to yield nor to entertain those whose opinions are less about debate than intending harm, their words lace with the poison of malice intention. What's the point in attempting dialogue with those already closed off from real introspection, whose discourse is meant to maim, brutalize, and deceive those who would follow in discussion. The enemy cares nothing about truth. Their posture is to misinform, ridicule, and mislead. Attack the messenger. Confound the message. Such tactics are as ancient as the character assassins obsessed with belittling Others who occupy time in such appeal. Like a rabid animal, unconcerned with aid, whose efforts are to destroy without regard for other. Those unable to remove themselves from such fray are likely to be menaced by the despots seeking to bully those they think weaker than themselves. Predators always seek out weakness, frailty, or slackness in reference to age or injury. Their strategy is to pounce upon vulnerability when forcing slaughter. Remember this when dealing with tyrants conditioned in such tactics. Allow them to revel in their seeming superiority for the time allotted them. He who judges holds to account all that boast laying judgment upon others. Their accusations a conspiracy of slander. Nothing is forgotten in the grander scheme of things. Retribution is the just reward of us all. Welcome, friends. I'm your host, Zen Garcia. This is FallenAngels.tv. And I thank you for joining me for what would be the first show of a new year as we have moved on to 2015 and I am praying for just the blessings of peace and comfort and security and a chance and opportunity for you and myself and all those that are seeking um, that are truly hungry for answers and that are looking for guidance in this world and how to understand it, that we are all led in relationship with the Most High and that we come closer and closer in discernment and revelation to those things which have been done for our sake, those things which the Savior Messiah allowed to be fired against him and uh, of which he allowed himself to be brutalized, murdered, beat on and spit on and ridiculed and all for our sake so that he could example the way that he was the truth and the light and that he was trying to give us remembrance of our first estate and from whence we had fallen from and which way home and how so many get lost up and preoccupied and the carnal aspects of this world and how it's so easy to be deceived how we are 
even since being young as children or even as babes that we had no choice in the matter and were assimilated by even those that loved us the most, our, our parents and our grandparents and uh, pastors and preachers and um, friends, peers, all those that thought they knew better for themselves and for our lives that tried to teach us about the things of this world. Little did they know as little did we know that we were all deceived and that we were all being blinded by the ruler of this world and that the Most High, the true God of us all, the creator of us all, that he had given to his fallen angel, to one that would challenge his authority, one that would tempt even all of the other angels of the Father and the Son with wanting and with opportunity to rule kingdoms of their own, to be as gods themselves. And how so many, like Lucifer, deceive themselves into believing that this could be possibility. That a creature could somehow challenge its creator and overthrow him in aspect, in rulership, and to take up the vacancy of such vanquishment. And the the appeal of Lucifer was so great that even humanity now, most humans are caught up in the lies with which deceived many during and before the war in heaven. And the same lies are still in effect and still working and still leading astray with the promise of power and authority and uh, chance to rule over and to oppress and to do as they wish to do anything without judgment or any concern for retribution. And those are the things that are leading many astray in the world. And so... um And those are the things that are also written about in even this book that we're going to be covering today. And I do want to, I had promised that I would tell you about the prophecy of five and a half days. And so I'm going to actually bring that up right now. It would just take me just a minute to find it. And I was asked also um, by those of you that are interested in the text that describes when Christ went down into hell and when he delivered all of the patriarchs, all of the, the saints, those from Adam unto the thief on the cross and took them into heaven what text that was and where you can find more information about it and so I'm going to post a link to that particular text 
in the chat room. Because if you have not read it, it is a fascinating read. And it will give you insight into what happened um, during the time that you know Christ was supposedly dead. When he was not, and he had went down into the down into Sheol to free up the patriarchs and to deliver them back into paradise and to give them a return to their first estate. He took them up to Michael and Michael baptized them in the Arcturusian Lake and then delivered them into New Jerusalem, the city of God. And so I'm going to read just a little bit uh, of how it was that the... um, Well, the prophecy of 5,500 years, the exact breakdown, because in this text, the book of Adam and Ua, And for those that don't know, I did a show last Sunday with John the Baptist on this text and some other details about it, which was an interesting show, to say the least. But anyways, um, this particular Gospel of Nicodemus, the very last part of it, chapter 12, it provides detail as to what, uh, how that prophecy of the five and a half days breaks down. And so I'm going to just read that part. And also at the very end of this, you'll see that what is interesting is that even though the Pharisees know that Christ is the fulfillment of this prophecy and that he was the long-awaited Savior Messiah, they still attempt to hide this knowledge and to deceive the masses and so after I read this then we'll go ahead and go back into the text because we stopped at chapter 40 and there's still um, a, a fair amount of the text to go into and again this is something that you're not going to find anywhere else and I will include it in the publication of my next book Also, Kathy of Tribulation-Now, she had sent me a link on the Thracian culture. It's a YouTube video that shows some of the incredible artwork and talks about how this culture predated the Sumerians, the Greeks, and the Romans, and how they had just accomplished incredible feats as far as the, and so I posted the link to that video, as far as their art and their culture and civilization, how they had in in their um, knowledge had far surpassed all the other peoples that were around them. And it also talks about in this video how so there's like many, there's like 5,000 mounds that have, like here in the United States where we had all these ancient mounds that when they were excavated and looked into, there were, you know, um, tombs often of giants and that there were, all these artifacts buried with them. Well, in this video, it speaks about how there's all these anomalous sites all over Romania and Bulgaria and, you know, the the area where the Thracians ruled and how most of them have yet even to be excavated and that the uh, nations that they are residing in that have no interest in looking into them or nor funding um, such excavations and how incredible it would be to 
to be an archaeologist with the funding to be able to to do that. And so Yeah, I I will Kim, I'll send all that to you at some point. But um I'm going to continue on with the show for right now. All right. Let me I'm going to go ahead and read this from the Gospel of Nicodemus first, and then we'll go into the text. Again, this is chapter 12 of the um, Gospel of Nicodemus. It says, After these things, Pilate entered into the temple of the Jews and gathered together all the chiefs of the priests and the teachers and scribes and doctors of the law and went in with them into the holy place of the temple and commanded all the doors to be shut and said unto them, We have heard that ye have in this temple a certain great Bible. Wherefore I ask you that it be presented before us. And when the great Bible adorned with gold and precious jewels was brought by four ministers, Pilate said to them, All, I adjure you by the God of your fathers which commanded you to build this temple in the place of this sanctuary, that you hide not the truth from me. You know all the things that are written in the Bible, but tell me now, if you have found in the Scriptures that this Jesus, whom ye have crucified, is the Son of God, which should come for the salvation of mankind, and in what year of the times he must come. Declare unto me whether ye crucified him in in ignorance or knowingly. And Annas and Caiaphas, when they were thus adjured, commanded all the rest that were with them to go out of the temple, and they themselves shut all the doors of the temple. Hold on, let me zoom in just a little bit. One more time. All right, yeah, this is better. All right. And said unto Pilate, Thou hast adjured us, O excellent judge, by the building of this temple, to make manifest unto thee the truth and reason or the true account. After that we had crucified Jesus knowingly, not that he was the Son of God, but supposing that by some chance he did his wondrous work, we made a great assembly in this temple, and as we conferred one with another concerning the signs of the mighty works which Jesus had done, We found many witnesses of our own nation who said that they had seen Jesus alive after his passion and that he was passed into the height of the heaven. Moreover, we saw two witnesses whom Jesus raised from the dead who declared unto us many marvelous things which Jesus did among the dead, which things we have in writing in our hands. All right, I want to stop here for a second and make a real quick commentary. The two witnesses that they're talking about, let me get their names for you. Um, are, they were the sons, Carinus, and Leishus, Leishus, and they were the sons of one of the Pharisees, and because they could not speak, they were also raised from the dead, as were many, many people were seen in Jerusalem after the resurrection of Christ, because when he was resurrected, um, he raised from the dead many of those that 
were buried and that were confined within Sheol. And many of these individuals were seen throughout Jerusalem and they this particular book, the Gospel of Nicodemus, which we are reading about and citing from, was the testament of these two witnesses. And that it even says in a chapter prior that because they could not speak and they were asked by the Pharisees to give a testament, they asked for uh, pen and paper. And they wrote their account and their testimonies match exactly word for word. And their testimony is what turned out to be and came to be known as the Gospel of Nicodemus. And so, um, continuing. All right. And we have found in the first book of custom is that every year before our assembly, we open this Holy Bible and inquire the testimony of God. And we have found in the first book of the 70, how that Michael, the angel, spake unto the third son of Adam, the first man concerning the 5,500 years, wherein should come the most beloved son of God, even Christ, and furthermore, we have thought that peradventure the same was the God of Israel, which said unto Moses, Make thee an ark of the covenant in length, two, cu- two cubits and a half, and in breadth one cubit and a half, and in height one cubit and a half. For by those five cubits and a half, we have understood and known the fashion of the ark of the old covenant, for that in Five thousand and a half thousand years, Jesus Christ should come in the ark of his body. And we have found that he is the God of Israel, even the Son of God. For after his passion, we the chief of the priests, because we marveled at the signs which came to pass on his account, did open the Bible and searched out all the generations unto the generation of Joseph and Mary, the mother of Christ, taking her to be the seed of David. And we found that from the day when God made the heaven and the earth and the first man from that time unto the flood are 2,212 years. And from the flood unto the building of the tower, that's the Tower of Babel, 531 years. And from the building of the tower unto Abraham, 606 years. And from Abraham unto the coming of the flood, unto the... Oh, hold on, I just want to make sure I don't mess up. And from Abraham unto the coming of the children of Israel out of Egypt, 470 years. And from the going of the children of Israel out of Egypt unto the building of the temple, 511 years. And from the building of the temple unto the destruction of the same temple, 464 years. So far found we in the Bible of Esdras and inquiring from the burning of the temple unto the coming of Christ and his birth, we found it to be 636 years, which together were 5,500 years. Like as we found it written in the Bible that the Michael, that Michael the archangel declared before unto Seth, the third son of Adam, which we know that Cain was uh, a stepson of Adam's, the third son of Adam, that after five thousand and a half thousand years, Christ, the Son of God, hath come. Hitherto have we told no man, lest there should be a schism in our synagogues. And now, O excellent judge, thou hast adjured us by this holy Bible 
of the testimonies of God, and we do declare it unto thee, and we also have adjured thee by the life and health that thou declared not these words unto any man in Jerusalem. And so there you have the breakdown of the 5,500 years. And also notice that these last three lines, they tell it to Pilate, but then they ask him to please not tell anybody else unless there be a schism in the synagogues, meaning that a riot because they killed the long-awaited Savior Messiah. And so, I'm not going to read the rest where Pilate gives, um, you know, an answer back, but you can read that for yourself. Again, that's the Gospel of Nicodemus. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go into the text. But is that not interesting? It gives you the exact breakdown of years, what happened to what time. And it also, you know, this is a prophecy this book goes back 5500 B.C., um, and that this prophecy was told to Adam, uh, well, actually told to Seth, the third son of Adam, when uh, Seth asked, uh, goes to the gates of paradise and asks for oil to anoint his father who's about to die. And that's when Michael then tells him that... Um, you know, that Christ will come into the flesh and that he then will resurrect Adam as well as Seth and all the other patriarchs and then take them back into paradise. And once they are taken into paradise, they will be anointed with oil from the tree of life and then, um, you know, resurrected to immortality. How interesting, huh? All right, so let me check the chat room real quick. All right, you're very welcome. Uh, all right, we're going to go ahead and go into the text. Back into the book of Atom and Ua, which again, for those that may be new, to this series or that are just coming to listen for the first time uh, is a Thracian text, which the Thracians were a culture, a civilization, ancient Christians who preceded the Sumerians, which most people think are the oldest culture and civilization on the face of the planet, uh, precedes them by 1,500 to 2,000 years. All right, going into the text, which also lets you know that um, knowledge of Christ and his coming into the flesh and that God would incarnate into the body of a man was known thousands of years before the the mythology of the Anunnaki was written down, and also that the Bible is not based on the Sumerian teachings. But in fact, the Sumerians even knew about these things before, um, you know, they had written down all their mythology, which the mythology of the Sumerians was written down by the fallen angels, and they are the ones that are trying to steal the worship of the Most High and to make themselves as gods, and so you can understand why they excluded and are trying to deceive and and also to um, dissipate any knowledge of Christ because they wanted to be as gods themselves. All right, continuing. Chapter 40. Then Atom and Ua got scared and froze. Atom said to Ua, What is this fire near our cave? There is nothing in which could kindle such a fire. We don't have bread to roast nor soup to cook, and we don't know about such a fire and how to call it. 
But since that time when God sent the cherubim with burning sword, which shined and sparkled in his hand, before which we fell down and were like dead, we haven't seen such a fire. But see now, Ua, this is the same fire which was in the cherub's hand. And it seems that God sent him here to guard us and to guard the cave in which we live. Oh, Ua, this is because God is angered and wants to ban us from the cave. Oh, Ua, we have broken again his commandment in this cave. That's why he sent this fire to burn near the cave so we wouldn't be able to go inside. If this is true, Ua, where are we going to live? And where shall we run to from God's face? Because he will not allow us to live in the garden of Eden. When he deprived us from its sweetness, he placed us in this cave in which we experience darkness, probation, and difficulties till we finally found in it a relief. But now, when he took us to another place, Away from the garden, who knows what will happen to us? And who knows if the darkness will not be even worse than in the cave? Who knows what will happen during the day or the night? And who knows if this new place is far away or not? Oh, Ua, because for God it would be more convenient to place us far away as possible from the Garden of Eden, where he wouldn't visit us and where we wouldn't see him anymore? Because we broke his commandment and because we tried, we tired him out by begging him constantly for things in any time you want. Oh, Ua, if God takes us to a foreign land different from ours and in which we finally found relief and comfort, that would mean a death to our souls and our names would be erased from the face of the earth. Oh, Ua, if we distance us more from the Garden of Eden and from God, how could we find him again and beg him to give us gold, incense, and myrrh and fruits from the fig tree? Where would we find him so that he might comfort us a second time? Where would we find him so he might remind us of the testament which he set up because of us? After that, Adam's silence. Adam and Ua stood and continued to watch the cave and the fire which burned at the cave. But this fire was from Satan. He picked some wood and dry grass and put it near the cave and he lightened a fire so it would swallow the cave and everything in it. He did this with the purpose to make Adam and Ua sad and to cut off their trust to God and to make them reject him. But because of God's mercy, Satan didn't succeed in burning down the cave of Adam and Ua. Because God sent his angel to save the cave by guarding it till the fire became extinct. The fire lasted from noon till the daybreak. This happened on the 45th day from the time when Adam and Ua were cast out from the Garden of Eden. Adam and Ua stood watching the fire and couldn't approach the cave because of fear of the fire. Satan continued to bring wood, throwing it into the fire till the flame rose high and covered the whole cave. He believed that this flame would swallow the cave by this big fire, but God's angel guarded it well. And despite this, the angel could not curse Satan, nor could he abuse him because he had no power over him. Neither did the angel want to use such words. That's why the angel was patient and did not say a bad word till God's word came and said to Satan, Go away from here, 
Once you deceived my servants, and now you want to kill them? Now, no, this is Christ, God's word. Every time it references God's word or the angel of the Lord in this text, it's referencing Christ. If I wasn't merciful, I would destroy you and your name from the face of this earth. But I have shown patience towards you till the end of the world. Then Satan ran away from God's face. But the fire continued to burn near the cave the whole day. And this happened on Adam and Uah's 46th day. From the day they were expelled from the Garden of Eden. And when Adam and Uah saw that the fire decreased a bit, they wanted to go to the cave and go inside it as habit, but didn't dare because of the heat of the fire. And then Adam and Uah both cried because the fire separated them from the cave and they couldn't go inside. And so Adam said to her, look at this fire from which we have a bit in our bodies. Before it used to step back before us, but now it doesn't step back anymore. After we crossed the border of the creation and changed our condition, and after our nature changed, the fire didn't change its nature, it didn't change since the creation and that's why it has power over us and when we come close to it it burns now our bodies this is another one of those examples that speaks about how it was that Adam and Ua they were transformed their bright natures were um, were removed from them and they were transformed into flesh and how whereas they used to not know the experience of darkness nor had they ever felt the heat of the sunshine nor could they feel the you know the feel of fire and it's burning um, to their skin now that they were all animal in nature and they have been transformed into flesh form they could experience all of these things and their their bodies could actually be affected by these particular things whereas prior um, because they were immortal angelic beings they could not you know, couldn't be burnt or feel in with their senses the experiences that we feel and are exposed to cold and heat, um, things of that nature. And Adam started to pray to God and said, See, this fire separated us from the cave in which you ordered us to live, and now we cannot go inside. And so God heard Adam and sent his word to tell him, Oh, Adam, look at this fire. Its flame is so different from the pleasant warmth of the Garden of Eden and its kindness. When you were under my rule, all things stepped back before you. But after you broke my commandment, all beings and things rose up against you. God said to Atom again, Look, O oh Atom, how Satan has elevated you. He deprived you from your heavenly and sublime status as my own. He did not keep his word but became your enemy. He lightened, lighted this fire so you and Ua would burn down. Why, Adam? Why didn't Satan keep his promise to you? Not even for one day, but instead deprived you 
from the glory which rested on you when you subjugated to his command. Did you think, Adam, that he loved you when he said to you these things? Did you think that he loved you so much that he wished to elevate and to glorify you? But no, Adam, he did not cheat you because of love for you, but he wanted you to go from lightness to darkness from elevated status to downfall, from glory to humiliation, from joy to grief, and from rest to fasting and exhaustion. Again, that shows you know, how they lost their immortal bright nature, how they were reduced to flesh form, and how... Um, they're now, because they're in a fallen state, they experience all the things of this world. Whereas they used to not ex experience nor be exposed to the things which affect us because we are in flesh form. God also said to Adam, See this fire at your cave lightened by, sight, by Satan? See the marble which surrounds you, and you must know that you and your descendants will be surrounded by it. If you listen and follow Satan's commands, he will destroy you with fire, and you will descend to hell after you die, if you listen to him. And then you will see how is burning his fire. Again, I want to remind uh, the listeners that my friend who interpreted this book from the Bulgarian into English, uh, that English is not his first language, and that one of the reasons why I'm even reading through this is um, I'm going to help him fix it so that it will read right for a predominantly English-speaking reader or audience. All right. Then you will see how it's burning his fire, which will burn around you and your descendants. There will be no salvation for you till my coming. same way as you now cannot go to the cave because of the big fire around it, not till my word will come and make you a path in the day when my testament will be fulfilled. There is no way for you to come to rest, not before my word will come to the world, who is my son. Then he will make the way for you, and you will have a rest. Afterwards, God shouted with his word at the fire which burned at the cave and said to it to divide so Adam could pass through. And then the fire divided on God's order and made a way for Adam. And God gave Adam the knowledge of the mystery of fire and gave him power over the fire and over all burning substances. And God withdrew his word from Adam. Again, one of the interesting things about this book is that the Most High, the Creator, speaks about his word speaks about the word as being his son and that uh, that he is the light of creation. And again, this you know book is very, very ancient. This text, very, very old. Chapter 43. 
I'll check the chat room here in a short bit. Atom and Ua walked towards their cave, and when they came to the place which was on fire, Satan blew at the fire and made a storm of it, and the burning fire reached Atom and Ua. Because of that, the fire singed and burned their bodies. Adam and Ua shouted loudly, saying, Oh, God, save us. Don't let us be eaten up and destroyed by this burning fire. Don't remind us of our sin when we broke your commandment. And then God looked at the bodies which Satan had burned with the fire. And when Adam called upon God, God sent his angel who stopped the burning fire with the help of the mystery of fire. But the wounds remained on Adam and Ua's body. Then God said to Adam, Look at Satan's love for you. He who deceived you by telling you that he will give you the divinity and grandeur. See, he is burning you with fire and wants to destroy you. And look at me, Adam. I created you and saved you many times from his hand. If I didn't save you, wouldn't he kill you? And God turned to Ua, saying to her, What did Satan promise you? In the Garden of Eden, when he said to you, When you eat from the tree, your eyes will be open and you will be like gods. You will learn what good and bad is. See, he burned your bodies with fire and gave you the taste fire, instead of giving you the taste of the kindness of Eden. And he showed you how to be burned by fire, and he showed you his wickedness and his power over you. Your eyes saw the good from which he deprived you and your eyes truly have been opened. You saw the Garden of Eden in which you were together with me and you also saw Satan's evilness which later came together with me uh, uh, which later came over you. Let me read that again. You saw the Garden of Eden in which you were together with me, and you also saw Satan's evilness, which later came over you. But what concerns the divinity? He cannot give it to you, nor can he fulfill his promises towards you, because he himself does not own it. But what he has is hate and malevolence towards you and your future descendants because he knows that the prophecy must be fulfilled which says that the descendants of the women will crush the head of the snake. And God withdrew his word from Adam and Ua. Afterwards, Adam and Ua went to the cave, still trembling because of the fire, which burned their bodies. And so Adam said to Ua, See, the fire burned our earthly bodies, but how will it be when we die if God withdrew his hand from over us? Oh, wait, wait, no, that's wrong. See, the fire burned our earthly bodies, but how will it be when we die if God withdraws and hands us over to Satan, who will punish our souls? Isn't our salvation remote if the merciful God will not come and fulfill his promise of our salvation? After that, Adam and Ua felt blessed that they came back to the cave because they thought, before that, they wouldn't be able to go inside anymore when they saw the fire for the first time. 
But at sundown, fire still burned and wanted to come closer to Adam and Ua in the cave. Because of it, they couldn't sleep in their cave, for Adam and Ua didn't know yet about the mystery of fire, which God revealed to them later. After the sun went down, Adam and Ua came out from the cave. This was on the 47th day, after Adam and Ua were expelled from the Garden of Eden. And then Adam and Ua went to sleep under the top of the hill, as they used to do. And they begged God for forgiveness. And after that, they fell asleep under the top of the mountain. But Satan, who hates everything that is good, thought to himself, God promised to save Adam from all difficulties that came upon him through a testament. But he didn't promise it to me, and he will not save me from my difficulties. No, since he promised to Adam that he and his future descendants will inherit the kingdom in which once I live, then I will kill Adam. The earth will not have him, and it will be only my kingdom. And then God will need me, and maybe... He will take me and my army back to heaven. Chapter 45 Later Satan gathered his army which came to him and said, Oh, our master, what will you do? Then he replied and said to his army, You know that this Adam who God created from the earth took our kingdom. Come and unite so we may kill Adam, or we shall throw a rock over Adam and Ua, so they will be crushed under it. And when Satan's army heard these words, it went to the side of the mountain where Adam and Ua used to sleep. And so Satan and his army took a huge, wide and smooth rock without damage, because they thought, if there is a hole in the rock, then when it will fall over Adam and Ua, the hole might come above them. And this way they could run away and would not die. Afterwards, Satan said to his army, Lift up this stone and let it fall down on Adam and Ua in a way that it wouldn't roll over to the other side. And when you make the stone fall down, Run and do not be delayed. And the army did as it was told, but when the stone fell down from the mountain, God ordered the stone to freeze. It hung above their heads so it wouldn't harm Adam and Ua. And so it happened on God's order. But when the stone fell down, the earth shook because of its size. And when the earth shook, Adam and Ua woke up and found themselves under the stone which hung above their heads as a roof. But they didn't understand how this had happened because they were asleep under the sky and not under a rock or a stone. And so when they saw it, they got scared. And then Adam and Ua said to Ua, Why the mountain is hanging above us? And why the earth shook because of us? Maybe God wants to close close us in this prison and to kill us. Or maybe he wants to close the earth above us. He is angry with us because we came out from the cave. without God's permission. And because we did it by our own will without asking God for advice, when we left the cave and came to this place, and then Ua said, if this is true, then the earth shook because of us, because of our sin. Oh, Adam, then pity us, 
because the punishment will be for a long time. But stand up and pray to God so he may explain regarding the misfortune. And so Adam prayed until the morning. And then God's word came and said, chapter 46, Oh, Adam, who told you to come out of the cave and to come here to this place? And Adam said to God, Oh, God, we came to this place because of the heat of the fire which was close to us. And then the Lord God said to Adam, Oh, Adam, you were terrified of the fire the whole night, the fire that didn't touch you, but how would you feel if you fell down and lived in hell for eternity? Because this is what is waiting all disobedient to God. If they don't repent already here on the earth. But Adam, don't fear and don't say to yourself in your heart that I put this rock over you in order to kill you with it. The rock came from Satan who promised you divinity and royal grandeur. He threw this rock so he would kill you and Ua, and this way to cut off your life from the earth and to kill you. But because I am merciful towards you when the rock was falling down on you, I ordered it to freeze like a roof over you. And this omen, O Adam, will be my own when I descend to earth. Then Satan will raise people against me, people who will not know me and who will want my death. And they will put me in a rock and will close me with a big stone. And I will stay in this rock for three days and three nights. But on the third day I will be alive again, and this will be your salvation, Adam, and salvation for your descendants as well, for all who believe in me. But, oh, Adam, I will not take you out from this rock until the three days and the three nights have passed, and God withdrew his word from Adam. All right, commentary here. You can see how this particular text, it gives a description of um, the things that would happen to Christ in his life and that they were parallel to some of the things that happened to Adam and to Eve when they were banished from paradise and the trials that they underwent when they were being tempted and um, deceived and led astray and persecuted by Satan and the rebel angels that had been cast out with him and that some of the things that happened to Adam were going to be replicated in the life of Christ and so like even the early in the book we found a description of um Adam being jabbed in the side and how it would be similar to Christ being the spear being plunged into the the side or the ribs of Christ and how this is would be where he would bleed, you know, the 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 blood and the water. And that this particular prophecy, you know, as far as the rock, it speaks about his being 
buried in the tomb in the the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, who was his uncle, and that he would be resurrected three days later. And that once he was resurrected, that this is when he would, dis- well, the three days that he was in the tomb would be those days that he would go down into Sheol and actually fulfill the promise of the five and a half days. That Adam, um, all the way to all of those that had died before his resurrection and that were being contained in Sheol, that um, Christ would resurrect all of them and give them over to Michael and that they would be delivered to the you know, baptized in the Archer Scene Lake and and then after their baptism be allowed to enter into the city of God that it, these kind of things are are similar and would be repeated. Once he came into the flesh. All right, chapter 47. Let me check the chat room. Gosh, the font is so small. I wish there was a way to make it bigger. Uh, You're welcome, Mur. I'm honored to read all of these different texts and also to to piece them together for you so that they make sense, you know, so that, um, because I, I think there's, you know, as wonderful and as incredible as are the revelations contained and found within the King James version of the Bible, it's my opinion that Even the Targum translations um, that they can provide really great detail on some of the aspects which we're a little bit vague upon, like even the you know the Genesis three, the parable of the the guarding what exactly was the fruit that. Eve ate of that resulted in her pregnancy with Cain, uh, why Adam would have to work the soil to feed his family, and how this fruit resulted in the enmity between the the two bloodlines, um, as well as other things like the why it was that um Abraham was asked to sacrifice Isaac which is a huge thing and I did a show on this um if you're interested in it you can find it on YouTube I believe it's called the sacrifice of Abraham and it's under my YouTube channel Endeavor Freedom And I cite um, not only from, like, the book of Jasher, but also the Targum references to help people to understand that Isaac knew that he had boasted in um, when he and Ishmael were talking about the kind of things that they would do for their faith. And this was right after the bar mitzvah that, you know, where Ishmael was circumcised and he was boasting to Isaac that um, that he would do, you know, this, this as well as other things for the Most High. And that Isaac then said that he would, if he were required, he would even give of his life and that he would ha- be happy to do it. 
And one of the angels of the Most High asked, um, heard him in his boast. It may have even been Christ himself. Um, but then they were going to test Abraham and Isaac as to the boast that was made by Isaac. And so that's how the declaration for Abraham to sacrifice Isaac came about and adds, you know, even greater detail. And there's all kind of other information, like the the passage that speaks about Og of Bashan. Uh, it's the Targums. I'll, I'll do one better, Murr, if you just contact me at zengarcia.com. I'll send you a copy, uh, a PDF copy of the text. It's called the Targum. And for those that don't know, the Targum it simply means translation. And how the Targums came about, and they're very inspired texts, um, is that when the Hebrew people, when the temple was burnt down and destroyed and the people were taken into captivity by Nebuchadnezzar and taken to Babylon for what would be the next 70 years um, they were assimilated into the culture there and the language the vernacular of the day and that was predominant in the Middle East was not Hebrew, for which the the Torah was written in Hebrew. But the language that they learned and which they became familiar with, especially the common people, the lay people, was Aramaic. And so only the priestly class, only the scholarly class, the educators, those that were well-versed in the study of the Hebrew Torah, retained the knowledge of the language and were able to converse and read and to hold conversation in the Hebrew language. And so when Darius um, made the declaration that the Hebrew people would be allowed to go back to their homeland, you know, after taking over Babylon, um, his son Cyrus the Great actually paid from his own treasury for the temple to be rebuilt. And so the people, after 70 years in exile, were allowed to go back to Jerusalem. And when the temple was rebuilt and worship was reinstituted, well, they had a problem. And that problem was that when they read from the Hebrew Torah, the people could not understand what they were talking about. And so what eventually happened and came about and how the Targums came about is that the rabbis would have to read one or two passages, one or two scriptures in Hebrew and then provide the Aramaic translation. And after, you know, this was done over and over, um... Uh, it eventually the people asked for a written account so that they could read the scriptures again in Aramaic. And so the rabbis then authorized a version of um, the Hebrew Torah to be translated into Aramaic. And these Aramaic translations came to be known as 
the Targum. And we now have English, an English translation of the Aramaic that was translated from the original Hebrew. And it adds incredible detail to the study of the first five books of the Torah, the, the Pentateuch, the five books of Moses. And so it's incredible, incredible study for those that are interested. Um, you can contact me at zengarcia.com. Just send me an email. Let me know you're interested in the Targums and I will send you an electronic copy. And also, for those that, like myself, prefer to read from a printed copy in book form, I did make these translations available to the public. I published them as a book. And so I'll give you the link for that as well. One second. Because I personally prefer to read outside in the sunshine rather than from a computer. Because I already do so much reading on the computer as is. I don't want to, you know, um, read all the time from it. And so wherever I can, I try to read from book form. All right. I believe this is it. Yeah, here it is. And this one actually has the two most well-known and most respected Targums, the Aramaic and the Palestinian Targum. And they're, when you read them, they're side by side. Well, one on top of the other, whenever there's something different or something added from one of the other Targums, that is not available in the other it will it will cite that reference all right there's a link to a book version of the Aramaic and Palestinian Targum for those that are interested again um you can if you you know, can't afford to buy a book copy, just email me. I'll be glad to send you a, a free electronic copy so that you can study it. It's very interesting study, very interesting. And so I definitely would recommend people read it. And again, it, it also confirms that... Um, Cain was not a child of Adam's, which is one of the interesting things um, that I found, you know, in the Targums, and which was confirmation to me as to the veracity of the premise of my fourth book, Lucifer, Father of Cain. All right, I'm going to read just a little bit more because we're running out of time. I'll try to finish this chapter and we'll end with it. All right. Afterwards, Adam and Ua went back to the Cave of Treasures, and there they prayed the whole day up until noon. This happened at the end of the 50th day after Adam and Ua were expelled from the Garden of Eden. Adam and Ua started again to pray their whole night in the cave, begging for mercy. At daybreak, Adam said to Ua, Come, we will make something for our bodies because it is getting cold. Adam and Ua came out of the cave and went to a place located north of the Garden of Eden and sought something for their bodies so they might cover themselves. 
but they didn't find anything and didn't know how to work it out. And their bodies were dirty. They were speechless because of the chilliness. And then Adam begged God to show him something for covering their bodies. And God's word came and said to Adam, and came and said, Adam, take Ua with you and come to the shore where you fasted before. There you will find skin from a sheep. The sheep were eaten by lions, but the skin remained. Take them and make clothes from it. And when Adam heard these words from God, he took Ua with him and started to walk from the northern border of the Garden of Eden to the southern shore of the river where they fasted before. But the evil Satan heard what God's word said to Adam regarding the clothing. This offended him, so Satan hurried up to the place where they were lying, where were lying the skins of the sheep with the intention to find them and to throw them into the sea or to burn them in the fire, so Adam and Ua wouldn't find them. But when Satan was about to take the skins, God's word came down from heaven and bound him in the place near where the skins were laying, so Adam and Ua might find them. And when Adam and Ua came closer, they got scared because of his repulsive appearance. Then God's word came to Adam and Ua and said, This is the one who hide, who hid behind the snake and who lied to you and who undressed you from your bright clothing and the glory that rested on you. This is the one who promised you grandeur and godly divinity. And then where is his beauty? Where is his brightness? Where is his glory? which rested on him. Now his appearance is repulsive. He became hateful among the angels and received the name Satan. Oh, Adam, he wanted to deprive you even from this earthly clothing, from the skin of the sheep which he wanted to destroy so you wouldn't be able to cover yourselves. What is his beauty? So you followed his example? And what did you receive when you obeyed him? Look at his evil deeds, and later look at me, me, your creator, and my kind deeds towards you. Look, I tied him up till you came, so you might see his weakness, that the strength in him fled away, and learn how to tie him up yourself and how to untie with the power of my speech. And God untied Satan. All right, I think I can read one more quick passage. And that way we'll be able to end on chapter 50. Chapter 49. Afterwards, Adam and Ua did not say anything but cried before God because they felt created differently and because their bodies needed now earthly covering. And Adam said to Ua, Oh, Ua, this is the skin of animals with which we will cover our bodies. But when we put it on ourselves, see our bodies will wear the mark of death because these which wore the skin are perished and dead. So we also will die and pass away into death. After Adam spoke to Ua, they took the skins and went back to the cave of treasures. In the cave, they started to pray, as usual. They reasoned how to make their clothes from these skins because of the lack of knowledge. And then God sent his angel to show them how to make clothes. And the angel said to Adam, Go and bring some palm thorns. And so Adam did what he was told. After that, the angel began to sew the skins before their eyes. In the same way as you sew a shirt by sticking the thorns in the skin. The angel asked God to make the thorns in the skin invisible. So the clothes would look like they were made by one thread. 
And so it happened by God's will. The skins became Adam and Ua's clothes with which God covered their bodies. From this time, Adam and Ua's nakedness was hidden from each other's eyes. This happened on the 51st day after Adam and Ua were expelled from the Garden of Eden. After Adam and Ua were covered, they started to pray and beg God for mercy and forgiveness. They thanked him for the covering their naked bodies, and they continued praying the whole night. At the daybreak and at sunrise, Adam and Ua finished their praying as usual, and later they came out from the cave. And Adam said to Ua, Since we don't know what there is to the west of the cave, then let's go there and see this place today. So they went to the western side of the cave. All right, we're going to stop there, chapter 50. We'll pick this up um, next week. I think probably three more shows, and we'll be able to make it through it. I think uh, also what I'll do is I'll do one more show, and then I'll do a show on something else just to break it up a little bit. And then we'll go back and do two more shows and try to finish um, this particular text. And hopefully we'll do something of interest then too. Uh, we'll do some myth. Uh, we'll pray for your friend, Lord. I ask that you uh, bless Ripe Brain Cooker and all of my listeners and myself and all of our loved ones and family members, Lord, and keep us all safe and under your grace and your protection and help us to do all we can to align ourselves with your will and with your fate and destiny for um our remembrance and our return to our first estate. We give all honor, praise, and glory to you and to the Son. In Yahushua, Yahuwah's name we pray. God bless all. I'll speak to you. I'll see you next week. Don't forget to join me Wednesday on Revolution Radio at Studio B, 8 to 10 p.m. Eastern. Um, and... I'll see you next week, and we'll pick it up. God bless all. Good night.